Why is this important to me? So I come from a really messed up family background. Um, I'm, actually, I'll say it, it's one of my slightly jokes in bad taste. I used to be really fucked up. I'm only slightly fucked up now. So if you want to go from really fucked up to slightly <laughs> fucked up, I'm your man. Um, and um, so um, my mother was this, came from a military family. And um, in the Second World War, she had a really an interesting job at Bletchley Park, which was a decoding centre. She said, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I want to be a frontline soldier. The only place that she could work in the front line was for the Free French Army. So she joined the Free French as um, an, a frontline ambulance driver. And, um, and she, um, she won two, the top French military medal, the Croix de Guerre, twice, for rescuing people under fire in the front line. And uh, in those days, the ambulances had canvas on the side of the ambulance. And so um, artillery shells actually went through her ambulance, but because they only touched canvas, they didn't explode on their way through. And uh, there are lots of great stories about um, her that are, you know, I'll tell you one. Um, you know, she's, she was tall, she was blonde, she was tough, and she'd like, she'd, um, her friend told me that, you know, she'd walk up to the bar. They were, the women were allowed to use the officer's mess in the field. She'd walk into the bar, she'd thump her hand on the bar, and she'd say, give me a whiskey, you know, and sort of, you know, so she was like one of these characters out of a film like Casablanca or something like that. When she came back from the war, she had post-traumatic stress syndrome, and when I and my twin brother Stephen were born, she couldn't bond with us, and within a week she went back to work. And we then had a succession of different carers, and neither of us bonded with any, any carer um, in the system at that time. And it was really uh, an awful childhood. Um, my brother and I, um, there was, we were competing over this limited resource of love. Um, and therefore we didn't like each other, we hated each other, because we were competing over the same thing. And coming from a very sort of old-fashioned, upper-class English family, they thought it was a good idea to educate us at home. So there was no escape in playgroups, there was no escape in schools. We got sent, they realised it was a mistake by the time we were eight, so we got sent to schools at eight. But we had very little social contact. I was very lonely, sad, miserable during my childhood, and I didn't get on with my, my twin brother. My father, there's a whole story there about his history, he set up a bank, got all his friends to put their money in this bank, and then proceeded to go bankrupt and lost all his friends' monies. And if you want to piss off your friends, that's really a good way to do it. Um, so then he was, and um, he wanted to commit suicide. He, he left a note for my mother saying he was going to commit suicide. He went off for two days and he came back and said, I couldn't do it. You know, so. Um, that was my family background. By the time I was 15, um, I had, unfortunately the sort of the, the hippie era was happening. There was a view that the conventional way wasn't the only way. And I sort of, I was reading books on yoga. I had this sort of moment of insight was, this isn't what I'm expected to do, which is become a banker, become alcoholic, and, um, you know, and suppress all my feelings with a stiff upper lip. That, that I didn't have to go that way. And so um, I bought my first book on personal development when I was 15, on witchcraft. And, of course, um, the, uh, it was only partially to do with the fact there was a picture of a naked woman on the front of the book, um, which was, of course, very attracted uh, a 15-year-old. I moved on very quickly to that to, from that to um, Buddhism, Taoism. I started studying martial arts when I was 18, uh, Chinese martial arts. My twin brother took a different direction, went into drugs, became a heroin addict, and um, he died at the age of 40. And so personal development for me is not like a nice to have. Um, um, fulfilling my potential was like surviving. And uh, I went into therapy in my 20s. I did lots of many, many different types of personal development, lots of different things. Every time I did something for myself like therapy, I would then go and study it. So I trained as a psychotherapist. Um, then I... Um, did something called neuro-linguistic programming. I ran an NLP school in the 80s. Um, then I did management training, became an executive coach. Um, it was almost like I did the therapy to get to normal, and then when I was interested in what's the difference between normal and great, then I was exploring that sort of part of the spectrum, the whole, that whole spectrum. And, um, you know, so, you know, my twin brother died. Um, and when I was in my 20s, um, I said to one of my psychotherapists, I said, you know, what can I do to help my brother? 
And he said, you can't really help your brother because you're in that toxic family system. You can't really see the wood from the trees. You can't really see what's going on. And so I made a poetic vow that if I couldn't help him, I would help other people. I would, I would help other people. So part of my gift to the world is a gift to my brother. I'm standing here today as a gift to my brother, as a way of redeeming, if you like, my relationship with my brother. And many people did help him, but, but you know, not sufficiently to, for him to... Actually, he died of an overdose. He didn't die on purpose. Um, so, to so all of that difficulty of my childhood, this is the really, really important sort of... It's not a trick, it's, that's too superficial. A tran important transformation is that all of that difficulty of my childhood is what makes me great at supporting and helping people. You know, the journey that I've had to travel for myself means that I can help walk with people on their journey of transformation. And so, you know, the lack of bonding with my mother, the, the, you know, the, uh, and there were many other good qualities about her, by the way, you know, and there were good qualities about my father, but the difficulty of my childhood is what gives me the ability to help people um, grow and transform. Um, the fact that I always had new carers, I learned empathy. I had to connect with a new person really quickly. I was um, futuristic. I had to think about one day there'll be a happy future. I was resourceful in terms of, um, you know, in terms of strength, it's called strategic. I was able to think my way through to the solution of the problems. A lot of my strengths and abilities come as a sort of contrast to the difficulty of my childhood. So all of that was not wasted. I wouldn't go back and do it differently. All of that has made me the deep man that I am today and the ability to, um, to hold space for people who are looking at very difficult things in their life. So... My life calling is helping people blossom starting with myself. And you can start starting with myself, it changes it, doesn't it? Because it's not like, I will help you blossom. You know? It's actually, I'll show you what I, where I've walked. And uh, there are many you know, themes in life, but actually the sort of the core difficulty and the core stuff around transformation is remarkably similar between different people. So I'm... Um, you know, I have a very rich life. I've been, I'm blossoming. I work here um, in the UK, doing life talent in the UK. I do executive coaching work. I have a very big following in China. I'm almost a hug guru in China because they don't they don't <laughs> hug in China. One time, as a joke, I I uh, ran an exercise on hugging, and we spent the whole of the afternoon doing it. And now, sometimes I walk into a conference, and someone leaps out from behind. <laughs> someone I've never met leaps into my arms, and um, I said, occasionally think I should. You know, do some sort of mystical thing, you know, and be like wear, dress in white and be the one, who, you know. But it's not quite, you know, it's not quite my part. Um, and also, you know, in China, you know, for them, they're so suppressed that um, so you get a group of a room full of people to shout, um, sixty people to shout, fuck, 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 at the same time. It's the most liberating experience. Um, I work in um, do um, um, lifetime in Greece as well. Um, building it in the UK. I've got the lifetime book sitting in my head, and I've got to put it on paper and. I'm, have committed to doing it in the next year. Um, and I'm growing the Lifetime program in the UK. In my personal life, I have lots of really, really good friendships. Um, I do lots of personal development. I go on workshops on awareness. I have a Buddhist master for more than 20 years. So I spend six, I spend six weeks a year with my Buddhist teacher. I actually, um, my accountant keeps telling me that I've got to spend less on personal development. But I say, we'll cut everything else. We'll keep the personal development budget. So much of life, is about the stuff out in the world and somehow you have to fit yourself to the stuff that's happening in the world. And the Life Talent Program is about finding out who you are, what you stand for, what you're passionate about, what you love, what you're great at, what your wounds are, what are the difficulties that you carry in your life and bring healing to those, and then expressing yourself from the inside out. So there's this great um, quotation which is that reasonable men and women fit themselves to the world Unreasonable men and women fit the world to themselves. Therefore, all progress depends on unreasonable men and women. So this idea that 
that uh, who are you, what are you about, and how do you shape the world in a way, how do you create a world around you that fits who you are and what you stand for, rather than having to shape yourself to the world all the time. And of course that's a lifetime's endeavour. You know, hopefully um, when I'm 94 I'll finally be saying, ah, oh, this is the life I was meant to have. So it's, you know, it's not, it's a difficult and long process, but so much of the world is about fitting ourselves to other people's standards, other people's ideas. So tell me, what is it that you are going to do with this one wild and precious life? That's the core question of the Life Talent Programme. So the Life Talent Programme is about four principles. Making the most of your life calling, your passion, making the most of yourself, which includes your, your calling, your vision for your life, your strengths, what you're great at, um, your psychological resources. Second principle, heal the things that stop you from really shining your light and being great in the world. Heal your obstacles to success and happiness. Third principle is action trumps everything. Try it out, experiment, try new things. Um, don't sit around thinking about it, go and do it. And the fourth principle is, you know, can you feel the support of life? Build your ability, increase your ability to feel the support of life itself, which includes the people around you. So I can see my friend Kathy here smiling at me. I feel supported in this moment. If I was just in my own little bubble, then I could be nervous, but if I look at particularly the people I know here, then I can feel the support of life itself. And so that's one of the key principles of um, the Life Talent Programme. And just very, very briefly, there are two introductory weekends, um, Discover Your Life Calling, which is what it says on the tin, and Personal Transformation Intensive, which is a, both about resources, but also about healing. Um, healing the wounds that you have. This really great thing, make the most of yourself, heal the wounds that you have, and have the wounds become um, resources. That the, you'll hear today people talking about difficult things in their lives that have become a part of their power, their empowerment, what makes them great, what makes them unique, what makes them special. Um, so that's personal transformation intensive. And then that leads into the this year's uh, Life Talent Programme was 16 days, the 2017 Life Talent Programme. And uh, next year it's going to be 20 days, I'm going to make it longer next year. And it's a year of exploring one's inner world and saying, how do I create a life that fits me rather than me fitting uh, life?